Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about something called templates. These basically allow us to use one bit of code for different data types. Um, basically it means we don't care what data type you're using, but this is what I want you to do with it. And I'll show you how that could be helpful. Um, so you've seen me just as kind of a placeholder function, I've been using this output function. Uh, and it might take an integer, or maybe it could take um, like a floating point uh, number. Uh, maybe it takes just a single character, or more practically a constant character pointer. Um, so it's kind of a, it's kind of a pain to have to write out output however many times for, you know, however many data types we want it to function with, uh, when you realize that the code within the every function is pretty much the exact same. Um, all we're doing is feeding the argument into C out. We aren't really doing anything different if it's a floating point than if it's an integer. So it's, it's the exact same thing. So shouldn't there be a way to basically say, okay, I don't care what data type you're passing in, I just want you to feed it into C out. Well, there is, and that's templates. So the way you accomplish this is above your function, you type template, and then in angle brackets, you type class, and then a name. Uh, this is going to be the name of kind of your placeholder class, which is going to be like pretty much whatever you pass in is going to be what this class is going to refer to. Uh, sometimes I like to just use T because it's nice short and it stands for type so that's how I remember it. Um, so then basically you use that as any other type of data. So the argument that we're going to take, well why don't we take a constant T reference keep things uh, optimized and then when we feed it into C out the name of the argument is N and uh, we'll feed N into C out. So we're not caring what data type we're going to pass in here. We're just going to feed whatever it is into C out. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. Let's do integer data. Let's do floating point data. And let's try um, character pointer data. Notice that we've only had to write out this function one time. Um, but looks like it's going to work for any data type that works with C out. So only had to write out the function one time, but it still works with different types of data. So that's pretty cool. Um, one other application of this that I think is particularly useful is say we have an array uh, of five integers and we go one, two, three, five, four. And what we want to do is we want to swap, uh, five and four here. So the way that you have to do this is you make another integer and you call this old or well you can call it whatever you want and you set that to the value of one of the integers uh, then you change the value of that integer to the value of the other integer and then the other integer you set to the value to the old value of the initial integer or the initial value of the first integer you know it's sort of hard to explain, but I think you get it. Um, so this looks kind of tedious, doesn't it? I mean, this is three lines of code. That's quite a lot of typing, uh, relatively. And it's not even very clear at a glance what's going on here. So we could add in a comment that says swapping array 3 with array 4. But now we're up to four lines of code, and we have to write out even more. So that's kind of wasted time there. Um, is there a way we can use templates uh, to accomplish this for us, and then it wouldn't. Then it would work with character arrays or or floating point arrays or any kind of array, um, as long as we use templates. Uh, and there is. All we have to do is, uh, well, we have our template class T right there, and let's make a swap these function. And this is going to take two T references: T reference A, T reference B. Okay. So now what are we going to do? Well, we're going to make a instance of class T, so if it's an integer, then we'll be making an integer here, but if it's a character, then we'll be making a character here. 
I'll call that a old and set that equal to the initial value of a. We'll change a to the value of b and then set b to the old value of a. Now, back in main, because we're using references, uh, we can just call the swap these function uh, with our arguments. It'll swap the two values in their proper scope, and then when we output the array, uh, hopefully, it'll be it'll have everything in the proper order. Uh, so let's try this out. No compile errors. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, it looks good. So just have to do one line here, one line of typing, and uh, we don't need a comment because uh, it's pretty clear. Swap these. Uh, what's getting what's being done here. Um, so, and by using a template, this will work with character arrays or uh, floating point arrays, like I was saying, work with any kinds of variables as long as they're of the same type. So that's pretty cool how we can use templates and references to accomplish that. Um, Alright, that's using templates with functions. Uh, next I'm going to talk about using templates with classes. Now the example that I'm going to use is not very practical, it's really just for demonstration purposes. But um, I will be making another video that shows a more practical use of templates with classes. But I don't want to take up too much time with that, so I'll just do a simple example here. I'll make our A class. Now usually I make this with an integer, but um, instead, let's try making it with any data type we want. So I'll make an instance of class T and call that data. Now the constructor uh, will take constant T reference in it, and that'll be the initial value, and we'll implement that to outside the class. And then let's also write, an out, write out an output function. So the tricky thing about using templates with classes is uh, before you implement every method, you need to type out template class T. Uh, and then instead of just going A, A, like we're used to, uh, you have to go A, and then in the angle brackets you put T. And then you put the scope operator, and then you can proceed with your method. Uh, basically just because um, it's not just a normal A class, it's it's a template class. Or well, it's using a template class in it. I think I think you get what I mean. Uh, now let's do the output one. Wait, what am I there we go. Um, okay, so this is pretty easy. All right, there's our class. It'll work with integers, characters, uh, floating points, just about anything. Uh, as long as it works with, uh, as long as it has a valid constructor and assignment operator and works with C out, it should work with our A class here. So how do we tell the compiler what, we, what we're going to want T to be? Because um, it needs to know uh, when it creates the class so it can know how much bytes it needs to reserve for this member. The way that we do that is uh, when we make our instance of the class we use angle brackets and put in what type of uh, what type of data we want it to hold. So here I'll make a few of these. I'll make an integer instance. I'll make a uh, character instance. And I'll make a uh, floating point instance. Now these are all instances of the same class, but they're different data types. So that's kind of interesting. Now let's call the output on each respective instance. Um, okay, let's take a look, see how this goes. Oops. Return type specification for constructor invalid. Uh, that's weird. I wouldn't expect a return type. Uh, let's see what else we got. Mm, it's telling me so I'm, I'm doing some prototyping wrong here. Not sure why that is. Um, hmm. Uh, oh, what am I doing here? I should not be calling this A, I should be calling that output. Uh, that was confusing, but alright. That should take care of our errors, just a little typo there. And uh, let's take a look. 
So looks like it worked. We called output with three different instances of three different data types, but it still was proper. It stored their data and then uh, outputted them as we wanted it to in the uh, in that method. So that's just a quick look at using templates with uh, with our classes as well as with some functions. Uh, I hope you liked the video, guys. Uh, if you did, rate it high. If you didn't really like it, that's all right. Rate it low. Um, Leave a comment or send me a message if you're confused about part of the video. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos ready to come out. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.